Hot summer. We always cook that on the grill. Everything's better on the grill, don't you think? There was this meat market on 35th Street, and they just had the best chicken. You could get them marinated, but they're usually too salty, you know? Oh, and there's my Aunt Mildred again. She used to be heavier on account that she used to have thyroid problems. She was always so active. Remember that German chocolate cake she used to make? Delicious. She married into the family. I love my friends, but I sometimes wonder how much they love me. What kind of sick torture is this? Please, show me a picture of an antique car. Old toys. An aluminum Christmas tree. Back in the day, we would only be allowed to open one gift on Christmas Eve, and it had to be a good one. Okay, then. Because we probably wouldn't sleep good at night. Anything but more nameless, faceless people. Hey, that guy looks like one of my relatives. Or that guy that used to work on my dad's car. I can't remember a time when I've gotten so fried. I've been captured behind enemy lines. This has got to be against the Geneva Convention. I wonder if I can slip out of here. How does this relate to collecting? My name is Jimmy Sparks. I wanted to create a show that showcases collections and collectors. Expert mega collector Doug Smith and I have no trouble finding incredible collections in every category you can think of, and in any neighborhood in any city. No selling, no buying, no haggling. We're not interested and they're not either. We are all about the stuff. It's collecting, seriously. <laughs> You know, I never considered my family photos to be of interest to anyone else. Unless there's something on these really old slides that's funny, historical, quirky, or odd, they're really of little value to anyone else outside the family. And the ones I hate the most are those old family vacation photos of someone else's family having fun on a nice white sandy beach. That should be me having fun on that nice white sandy beach. But on the other hand, genealogies become pretty popular today. People love researching their roots and filling out their family trees. I suppose the farther back you go into history, the more peculiar and interesting characters you might find. But when does this all go from strictly personal enjoyment to becoming a collection that others might find interesting? And beyond that, when does it become a valuable commodity worthy of a museum, public display, or even a guided tour? Well, today I sent Doug out to a farm to try to find answers to these questions. Kenny Bush, his roots on the farm and his organized collections are intertwined. So much so that he's turned their family story into something worthy of a museum. Throughout Collecting Seriously, you may see this logo. A fool. We think a good way to check out somebody's collection without feeling overwhelmed is to, in your own mind, categorize what it is you're actually seeing. Most collections may consist of bulk, the mass or size of it all, fun items, the pieces that people are naturally drawn to, Unique items, the rare, limited, one-of-a-kinds, and usually the most valuable pieces, and the ace in the hole, which is anything the collector has pride owning. It can be the best, the first, the favorite, or even something they don't have yet. Not all collections have these traits, but following these four guidelines might help you not to get lost. A fool. I don't know what I was thinking. Jimmy told me we were coming out to a farm. I should have worn my tour boots. Doug, the collection is in the barn, so you're going to have to watch where you step. Kenny, I tell you what, I've been in a barn or two in my life. None of them look like this. Is, what do you call that? Is this a museum or what? It's a family farm museum. It's, it was a barn and I changed it into a museum for my collections. I had a few of these toys in the basement and my wife told me if I bought one more thing in, one thing had to go out. Well, this building was just sitting empty, so that's what started the museum. This is a hog barn. It had been converted from a horse barn at one time to a cattle barn to a milk barn. And then the last thing is, I feral pigs in here. Is there a particular area that you collect, or you said it was a family museum, so what is it exactly we're going to see? Well, it involves a lot of family, and one of the reasons that I started it was so that my grandchildren would know a little bit of the history of the bushes. I'm a really a third generation farmer in the Bush family. Uh, my grandfather had a farm down the road a ways. My dad bought this farm in 1944 and he passed away in 1951. 
and I quit school and took over farming at that point. Here is a collection of all different literature that I've saved throughout the years, all on tractors, old cars, machinery, advertising. This is a P&O equipment list that probably about 1930, and it goes back to about 1900, and all the implements that they produced. The farming is pretty obvious, but what about the old cars? You have a special interest in old cars? When I was young, we used to have a lot of old cars, and we'd cut them down, and we'd make hot rods out of them, and, and put their motors in tractors. Some of your literature goes back to 1900. It's all uh, basically about farming and things that interested you from your childhood then? Right, and automobiles and old implements. This is a history of Peerless Dairy. My uncle, him and his brother started Peerless Dairy in Rock Island right by the Centennial Bridge in the early 1900s. This is all the bottles and all the equipment and all the history. I have a whole book of the history of Peerless Dairy. They sold the business in the 1940s. And so this is all the different bottles and the way it started in the old delivery trucks and everything that I've duplicated. Now, some of these bottles are pretty valuable. Here's one that has Abraham Lincoln's image on the front. And I know a lot of the ones out of the war years were very valuable. This is one of my cases of old Rock Island machinery. My dad bought one in 1927. He drove her home from Rock Island on steel wheels and it took him all day to get here from the factory. Hmm. There's a picture of my dad plowing in 1929. You know, I never thought about that, but back in the 20s, if you bought a tractor, you just drove it home? Well, if it was close like this, you know, Rock Island was fortunate enough, it had several tractor factories. It had the Rock Island, and then it had International Harvester, and then later, Case bought Rock Island, so there was Case. Well, you're taking me from case to case to case, and I think there's a story in every one of them. We could do a whole segment on just one of these cases. Everything has a little story. This is a, a tractor that I restored. It's a hider. Was that made here locally then in Rock Island? It was made locally. This is my belt buckle collection. Down here, we have a collection of different toys that I have collected. Did you have a lot of toys on the farm when you were growing up? No. They're pretty rare, I would imagine. <laughs> Probably didn't have time to play anyway, did you? Mostly working. We're mostly working. We had a few farm toys, but very few. This is my arrowhead collection. I kind of made it a hobby that if I was running the elevator all day, it gets awful boring looking at that row of corn going through your field. If you see a little white speck in the ground, a chance to get off the tractor and examine it, you know, is always a, a good break. It was an arrowhead I won, and it's part of this collection. If it was a bird poop, it's a bird one. <laughs> now, here's uh, one of the bigger ones I found. I found it about 40 years ago on what used to be, I think, an Indian village on this farm. And this is one that I found just last fall right in the same area. Well, I can't imagine the size of the Indian that it took to swing something like that. It's nine and three quarter pounds, and it was used by the Indians to break ice in the river. Okay. That's what the historical society told me. Do they have a, a camp nearby or? I feel there's one area on this farm that was a camp because I found 90% of them within a few thousand feet of that camp. I have found them other places, but not in the quantity that I found there. I went and had some of them dated and they date back to 12,000 years before Christ, like that big one there. So this is actually you on the front cover with John Deere catalog. Yeah. I Looks mean, like out, I mean, of, I mean, out of the 60s, maybe. It was when they introduced the 4010 tractor. I was not really impressed with it at the time, but after using one one day, I went and bought five of them. Wow. <laughs> well, I assume they gave you the first one for free. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you have a real connection with John Deere. Yeah, they used to do a lot of experimenting with me years ago. This is a little story of the Bush history. My grandfather Bush, he comes over from Belgium in about 1900. He worked for the railroad until he got enough money to start farming. And my other grandfather, he's come over about 1903. He uh, worked for uh, a foundry until he had enough money to start farming. So they all were farmers. So this shows some of the history of their farming and their cars. And, and this is some of the old horse carriages, picking corn by hand. Then we go over to here more or less is when my dad got married and there's the barn that he built in 1930 and it just sat there and deteriorated when we moved away and the landlord never painted it so when they tore it down 
I took sections of it and put on my daughter's basement, paneled her basement and all the paneling upstairs. And then I moved the cupolas from that, from that building. And when the guy had started destroying it, I bought as much as I could off of me. Right there's a picture of this house we live in today. When we moved here, it had no electricity or nothing like that. Now, when your dad passed away, were you in high school at that time? I was in high school. I quit high school to run the farm, so to support my mother and my two sisters and my brother. So you ended up getting a GED then? Yes, I did when I was in the service because I uh, was drafted into the service. And then uh, we rented the farm out that year, but we lost so much money that they gave me an early discharge. Okay, this is where... Marilyn come into the picture. Uh, there's the picture of us having our first picnic, which now is at the bottom of Lake George. I mean, it was a picnic ground at the time. Was Marilyn your high school sweetheart? No, I didn't know her until about four years later. I mean, I, I met her at a dance. Uh, they let you out, off the farm to, to go to a dance one night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I met her at a dance at St. Joe's in Rock Island. So. Having trouble putting you in a specific category as far as a collector, how would you describe yourself? I collect the things that I really feel are different or like my arrowhead that's something that's part of me and my toy collection are mostly things that I used as a farmer. I don't know what category you could put me in really. You're one of a kind. Well, I, I collect several different things and everything has a story.